Hey, Steve Noble, Noble Moto. What we're gonna do today is rebuild an SNS Super E and G carburetor. Really, they're the same thing. We're actually just gonna rebuild the E, but I'm gonna take the G apart anyways, just so you can see they're pretty much the same thing. The only real difference between the two is the G has a larger bore. I wanna say it's two and an eighth, might be two and a quarter. You'll have to look it up. Either way, the G is for like 130 horse and beyond. Uh, the E is for pretty much everything else under that. So we'll take her apart. I'll show you what all the little pieces parts are. We'll soak them in the uh, carb cleaner jug of carb cleaner. And uh, I'll come back in a few days. We'll clean up, put it all back together. Let's move over to the bench, take a look at what we got going on. So just to explain, this uh, Super E has what's called a Thunder Jet on it, which is it picks up fuel from the float bowl here. It runs up into here, and then this is like an adjustable main jet. Uh, you can take this cap off and then uh, change out the jets down in here. What The way this works basically is it adds a fourth fuel circuit. Instead of just having your idle, intermediate, and main, this adds in like a second main. But you change your idle and intermediate jets down a little bit, that way you have enough fuel to cover a long RPM range. Most people don't need this thing. Um, this is really more in case of you're really drawing a lot of air, got some head work, some high compression pistons and that whole nine yards, or you're really spinning your engine up to a high RPM, like 7,000 RPMs, which means you'll have to change your rev limiter and stuff. And honestly, if you're doing that, you've probably done head work because you can't really spin them that fast. Uh, the stock heads won't really allow it, at least not on the Evos and the twin cams that are carbureted. So, or the shovels, of course. So that's what this is. There's nothing you really have to know about it other than the fact we will take it apart and we will clean it along with all the rest of the pieces parts. The G does not have one of those on there. But like I said, they're pretty much the same carburetor uh, other than bore, the bore inside there. So first things first, let's take the float bowl off of this thing and see what it looks like inside. Take your trusty flathead screwdriver. And you actually only need to take off this one here. You do not need to take these two off to get the float bowl off. And actually, quick interruption before we do that, since we are rebuilding it, let's take the drain plug slash main jet access port out of this thing. There we are. Because there is an O-ring on the bottom of this. And we're going to want to replace that. Plus, crud gets caught up down in there, as you can see. Now, you take these other three flathead screws and loosen them up first. Spin them right on up out of here. And this one really long one. Now these three are all the same length and then the fourth one is absurdly long so you're not really gonna get them screwed up. But lift it up off of there. There should have been a gasket in there. There wasn't. That's what happens when you buy used parts on eBay. Uh, we got a little crud here build up. Looks like it sat empty for a while. Uh, not terrible. Bottom of the float bowl's got a little bit of varnish in it but nothing terrible. So first things first, let's take a look at taking apart the float bowl. First, we're going to take the float out of this thing. There's a little pin right here that the float pivots on. And there's a flathead screw right here. You should be able to break that sucker free. Screw it on out of there. Set that off the side. Now remember, this is technically in the float bowl, so you're going to want to clean this because it does get that weird corrosion film on it. But from there, you can just lift the float right up out of there. You've got the little pivot pin here that needs cleaned. The float needle. And the float itself. This is an important thing to inspect. Because there's like a black, rubbery, Teflon, some other weird kind of coating here on the tip of this thing. And if this surface or that uh, coating gets damaged, it won't seal off. Because this is where the fuel actually comes up. And when the float lifts up, this little plunger goes down and seals it off and stops the gas from coming in. Works exactly the same as your toilet. 
So from there, we just got a little varnish and a little dirt down there. Nothing terrible. This should be a pretty easy cleanup and rebuild. This is the accelerator pump nozzle, if you're wondering. This is pressed in. Just leave that in there. As far as I know, it's pressed in. So then you can take these other two screws out. Now, as you do this, this is important. Push down on this cap. There's springs under this thing. Push down on that cap with your thumb. Take these two screws out of there. Take this screw out. Now be ready, there's two ball bearings in here and then there's a little spring in there. So we're gonna very carefully lift this sucker up. Whoop. And we've got one ball bearing, two ball bearings. Underneath this ball bearing, there's a little spring. Now the best of my knowledge, these two ball bearings are the same size, so uh, you can take them out, but set them aside. Luckily my screwdriver is slightly magnetic, so that makes removal easy. Carefully don't roll away. Then you can take, well there's your spring for your accelerator pump. Then you can take a little pick or your fingernail and take these two little O-rings out of here. I'm going to take this O-ring out first, set that to the side. Now there is this little spring down in here. You want to be careful with this sucker. It's easy to damage. But that little spring right there, hopefully you can see it, that sits underneath the ball. That works as a check valve. It lets the accelerator pump fill up with fuel, and then when you squirt the accelerator pump, it prevents it from going backwards. Uh, this is the accelerator pump diaphragm right there. We'll set that off to the side. In case you're wondering, it should be dished down in there because the accelerator pump rod pushes it this way. You can see we got some pretty good corrosion going on in there. Ew. So that'll definitely need to be cleaned up. But that's pretty much a full disassembly. Wait, let's check the... Sometimes you get a brass fitting here uh, for the float. With the rebuild kit, sometimes you don't. So let's check our cycle standard rebuild kit. Pick this up from our friends at Lowbrow Customs. Good people over there. Cut this sucker open. And you want to be careful you don't mix up your new parts and your old parts, of course. But as we can see, man, that's a nice kit. As we can see, it comes with a new uh, float delivery, float plunger, thingamajigger, whatever you want to call it. Port? I don't know. Either way, this sucker's coming off then. So, take a 5 8 wrench. Hopefully it'll spin free. Just bash my fingernail. That kind of hurt. Then we can thread this sucker off of here. Man, that really hurt. And we can take this, and since we're, we have a new one of these, we don't have to clean it, so we are going to set this off to the side. Keep our new parts here, off to this side here. Man, we've got all the little pieces parts here. Even got new little bearings. we got a new flathead screw. So what we're actually going to do at this moment is we're going to take all the parts that we are not going to reuse, and I'm going to set them off to the side in my plastic little parts container. Not going to throw them away yet, because maybe I'll need them. This tiny little spring. These O-rings. The pin. The float ball screws. Oh, wait a minute. Those two screws are... Oh, that. I'm going to set all that stuff off to the side for now. That way we don't get mixed up with our new stuff right there. So with that, the bottom is ready to be thrown in the parts washer container. Now let's take a look at the carburetor body. So next we can remove the main jet here. Take a big old flathead screwdriver. Should be able to break that free. If it doesn't break free, you might have to hold it with a wrench and spin it off of there. Make sure your screwdriver fits nice. 
These jets are brass and it doesn't take a lot to damage them. Looks like we've got a... an 80? It's kind of odd. That's a big jet. Man, it's 80. That's a big jet. But there's your main jet right there. Then we're going to pull the emulsion tube out of there. Doesn't look terrible. It's got a little gunk on it. Next, we're going to take our flathead. Move the wrench out of the way. Take our intermediate jet out of here. That is a 26 and a half. Man, there's no way this carburetor was running right. That's a tiny intermediate jet and a massive main jet. Bet they couldn't figure out why it ran fat. So, that's out of there. Now there's one other spot to pay attention to. Some of these will have a removable air bleed on here. Just a hole here. Some of them, this is, it's essentially a main jet. It's just smaller. So, you're gonna wanna keep track of these. I'd say take notes, take photos. I have a video. Um, okay, well, I guess on this one, it's actually got a smaller thread to it. That's interesting. A lot of them, it's the same thread as the main jet. You just buy a smaller main jet. So, we'll set that off to the side. From there, the bottom end of this sucker is pretty tore down. You can see there's a whole lot of crap up here in this port. Uh, yeah. We're going to want to clean that out of there really good or that's going to break off and you'll find its way into a jet. Now we're going to peel the o-ring up out of here. Use a razor knife or a pick. I wouldn't dispose of this yet. Put it with your parts just in case you have to match it up with this, uh, another size. Or match it up with the new one to compare sizes. Cool. That's the bottom of the main body. Now we're going to take out our idle mix screw. Should just thread right up on out of there. You have a spring that goes with it. Look down in there. Nope, no O-ring. Set that off to the side. That's one of the things, or we get a new one. But again, keep track of it. Then we're gonna take uh, the cap off our Thunder Jet. I'm gonna have to hunt down an O-ring for this because uh, that's not gonna come in the rebuild kit. Take our jet out of our Thunder Jet. Well, it looks like we're just screwing the whole Thunder Jet right out of the, the body. Huh. And we should be able to just thread the jet right up out of the Thunder Jet. We need parts for these. I believe they're made by Zippers Performance. Uh, that's a 120. That's a big jet. It's a big hole in that jet. Cool. That's all there really is there, though. Pretty cool. You can leave this brass fitting in here. Just uh, make sure it's you know in there tight and make sure we clean out really well. From there, we can take off our enrichment circuit, a.k.a. the choke. Let's take your brass fitting off. You should be able to lift this plunger. Should be able to lift this plunger up out of here. Holy crap. This one apparently has been in there a while. Okay, if it's that tight, we're not going to force it. I'm going to let it soak in the carb cleaner thing for a day or so, and then I'll pull it back out of there and see if I can't get this thing the rest of the way out. There's a lot of corrosion down there on that shaft, so it might take a little bit. Now, on this one, you're going to see this has a flat spot on it here. Someone has drilled this out for an extra port. Um, so we're going to take up the flathead screwdriver out of that. This is actually the air vent for the float bowl. Uh, to be completely honest, I don't know why they did this. Um, but it's there, and we can't leave it open, so we're going to set the screw to the side. And uh, make sure we blow that out with carb cleaner 
really well. Maybe somewhere in the process we'll figure out why they did that. wonder if it's maybe adjustable. I'm not completely sure. I've never seen anyone do that before. Hmm. Well, anyways, so there's all those pipe pieces. Now, we'll take our cable guide off of here, just because we don't need that in the parts washer. Set that to the side. So, right here we'll stop. If you're just cleaning up an old carburetor, kind of like this one is, it's really not that bad, this is really as far as you have to go with it. You generally don't have to take the throttle plate out of here, especially if it moves nice and free. You can usually just get away with, uh, you know, clean it up and uh, hose out all the ports with carb cleaner after it soaks for a few days and you should be good to go. But uh, we're going to take it all the way apart and rebuild it anyways. So, next thing to take out of here is going to be these two screws that hold the throttle plate in. These are never ever cooperative. Okay, so I was just filling with this thing, and uh, I got this one free, I think. No crap. Maybe I didn't. Man. I'm going to try and pound the Allen wrench down in there. So it seats just really, really tight. Man, that is not turning. Here we go again. Okay. So this is a five sixty force Allen screw. So I've got it down in there. It didn't turn. Okay, so these aren't coming out of here. So you got two options. You can either soak it and try again, or we've got brand new ones. So, guess what? We're gonna drill them out. We're starting with, so it's an Allen screw. So that means it's gonna find center anyways. So we're gonna start with a drill bit that is larger than the Allen bit. Actually, we gotta go larger than that one. The reason for that is you don't want it just biting on the Allen screw there a little bit um, because it'll jam up the drill bit and it'll break it. If we were worried about the threads, we would start with a drill bit that is smaller than the Allen wrench. That way it uses the Allen wrench hole to find center. I have a new whole new plate. We're just worried about getting this sucker out. So we're actually going with a bit 
that is slightly larger than the thread diameter. So at the point this drill goes all the way through, no more threads, no more screws. This thing's coming out. So, make sure you wear eye protection when you do this. I think it's drilled through enough. All right, so, now we're gonna pick up all our little pieces parts here from our rebuild kit. We're gonna move all that clean stuff off to the side. That's why I should have done before I start drilling. Now that you got your screws out, hopefully you can just pull it on out of there. Probably not if you were drilling on it. It's probably a little burr. So we're gonna take some needle nose vice grips, work it back and forth. Hopefully it comes out here with minimal struggle. Woo! All right, there, we got it out. Took a little ingenuity. I took the soft side of the screwdriver, AKA the handle, put it in from the other side and tapped out that way. Sometimes you have to improvise. Throw all plates out. That's why people don't normally do that. It's kind of a pain. Now from there, we're gonna take the accelerator pump end off of this. Uh, we could take the other end off. I guess there's no real preference. Six of one, half dozen of the other. So, let me grab a 716 wrench. Spin that nut right on off of there. Take that set to the side. There's a lock washer under there. It's be a good time to take notes or photos or a video. Now we're going to take our screwdriver, take our accelerator pump screw out. We've actually done that first, but you know, whatevs. Set that off the side. Now I'm gonna push this thing off of here. There's a good chance it's gonna shoot up in the air. So, trying to be careful when doing this. You're gonna to have to wind this torsion spring back up. Actually, we might be able to get it off of there. Take the torsion spring up over the top of that bump right there. Whoop. Then you'll be able to get underneath it with your flathead. Do a little on both sides. Watch your fingertips. So if that spring finds them, it's gonna hurt. Take the flat plate there, set it off to the side. Slide this whole bushing piece right on off of here. We apparently don't get a new one of these, so be careful with it. Apparently we don't get a new one of either of those plates. So we're gonna soak these, clean them all up, we do get a new spring. Hoorah for that. From there, we can take our accelerator pump rod. Slide that right out of there. Should be able to slide the rubber little slinky dust cover boot off of this. Maybe. Oh man. That one's been on there a while. Whoop, pop that sucker off of there. Now pop the rest of it off of there. Rubber is not supposed to crack and crumble. Now, there's a washer here. Take that off. Again, good time to take pictures of everything. Now, you should be able to take this other side and slide it right on up out of here. Hopefully you can see me doing that. There's your throttle return spring. If you had to drill this like I did, you have a little burr right here to reckon with. So we're going to take some pliers, squeeze those little burrs back down in there. Just 
Squeeze those little burrs back down again. Slide. What would be the whole throttle shaft out of there? In this case, it's two separate pieces. Slide that piece up out of there. Cool. We're sitting in good shape. There's little bushings in there. We did not get new ones. Interesting. So, before we go any further, we're going to find out if we need to put new bushings in it. And to do that, we're just going to take the other throttle shaft, slide it in there. Make sure it feels like it has a nice tight fit, and it does. Should seal up nicely. Shouldn't leak. Should be good to go. From here, oh, I'm gonna take our throttle stop screw out of there. get a new one of these with a kit too by the way uh pretty much from there everything's out except the choke which still is not being too cooperative Could probably soak this with pb blaster too or something whoop hey hey oh there we go she's out cool there's a lot of crud down in there this we have to clean up and reinstall all right get out our old trusty can of carburetor cleaner Open her up. Wear eye protection. Carefully, carefully move this back into the shot. Then carefully lower your carburetor down on in there. Lower in all your parts that you're going to reuse that go inside the carburetor. that comparing this to the rebuild kit there's supposed to be a little gasket or a little basket inside this thing um, I don't have it so I'm actually gonna put these in the float bowl and hope for the best when it comes to removing these. Along with the jets and everything, the emulsion tube, all that jazz. Cool. And the excel and the full bowl bottom. And that thing. I think it's all the pieces parts. All right. We're going to carefully load this down in there. It's probably going to dump over, but we tried our best. There we go. Now, put our lid back on. Cool. See you in a few days. All right, so it's been a few days. So we're gonna pull things out of the carb clearing can. So, um, we're going to take a good look at everything here, see where we're at. Broke most of the gunk on here free, 
Don't be careful getting this stuff on your fingers. It'll dry out your skin. Um, everything looks pretty good. So, uh, we got some aerosol carb cleaner here. There we go. We got some aerosol carb cleaner here. And we are going to step off to the side and give these things a good thorough bath with the aerosol carb cleaner. All right, now one of the important steps of cleaning the carburetor is clean out the idle circuit. The idle is fed by the intermediate jet right here. And you want to make sure it comes out where your idle mix screw is right here. So we're going to give it a little squirt there. Yeah, nice and clean. Then we're also going to give it a little squirt from the intermediate jet port and make sure it comes out up here. There we are, kind of dribbling out of there. Then we're going to squirt it in where the screw goes, plug the jet with our thumbs, make sure it comes out the intermediate jet. Whoops, or maybe it'll go that way. Slightly alarming. Uh, you want to make sure it comes out that intermediate jet. It's very important. If it does not do that, ah, this one's kind of gunked up. Okay, so this took a little bit extra uh, time and attention, so I didn't put it all on video. Uh, I had to put some compressed air through here. So this port here is where your intermediate jet goes. That's also what feeds your idle circuit. Uh, your idle mix screw is here. I think that's in the shot, right there. And then of course it comes out, these three little ports, right down in there. Doot, doot, doot. So this took a little time, and extra time and attention. This is your intermediate jet, and it threads into here. We'll check to make sure of this for cleanliness in a minute, but that is the pickup for your fuel circuit. You actually see here where it comes up the casting, then it mixes uh, or the, the bleed screw here, or I'm sorry, the idle mix screw right here uh, controls how much flow comes out this port here. So the thing to remember is that's kind of a Y circuit. It comes up and then it's regulated here and then it comes out there. So what you have to do is you have to shoot carb cleaner in there, up through here. You need to make sure it comes out these holes you need to make sure it comes out this way. I took the old bleed screw and I threaded it in there too and shot some carb cleaner through it to make sure it went all the way through. And you wanna do this every which way you possibly can because that is a teeny tiny little port down in there. And uh, maybe you can see it right down in there. Okay, that's a teeny tiny little port in there and you wanna make sure it is flowing completely free because if it won't, your bike won't idle. So. Give extra attention to that port when you clean your carburetor. That's the step everyone overlooks, and then they start thinking, oh, something's wrong with the timing. Nothing's wrong with the timing. Your idle right, circuit's clogged. So, that's nice and thoroughly clean. Shoot compressed air through it, shoot carb cleaner through it, shoot it through every which way you possibly can until you're 100% positive that is clean. Now, with all that being said, now, we can take a look at our jet. It does seem to be nice and clean. We'll look through it up to the light. I don't see any light through it. So, we are going to take uh, our torch tip cleaner here, and we're going to snake out the center of this thing. You want to be careful, because your torch tip cleaners have a little bit of a file surface on them. This is made of brass, and you don't want to accidentally rejet your jet. So you're just looking to poke that through, push the crud out. Poke it through sideways, like so. Poke it through sideways like that. Hold up the light. Make sure you can see through it. I still can't see through this thing for some reason. Find your carb cleaner. Spray it out. Oh, there we go. Get a new can of carb cleaner. Spray it out. Make sure you don't shoot the stuff at your camera lens. Oh yeah, look at that. All right, hopefully that didn't get on my lens. And uh, we know that one's nice and clean now. So, step one, now that we know the idle circuit's clean, 
The jet is clean. I can see through it. We are going to thread that sucker back in there. Take your best flathead that fits the best. Tighten her up in there. See how my skin's all dried out? That's why you're supposed to wear gloves when you use carb cleaner. Also, a piece of advice. Carb cleaner racks of white gold. Uh, take off any metallic wedding rings or jewelry you have. Otherwise, you get this wicked little chemical burn under it. Zero out of ten. Do not recommend. Anyways. Now we're going to look at the emulsion tube. Again, hold that sucker up the light. See how clean it is inside. Snake it out with your little torch tip cleaner here. Make sure it's nice and free. Make sure there's no crud in any one single one of these ports. And from there, thread that thing right up on in there. You don't have to kill it, just tighten it up. Brass going into aluminum. You just don't want it to vibrate out. That's all you're trying to do. So, that's good to go there. Next is going to be reinstalling the bleed screws. Or the bleed jets. Um, I'm going to have to check the book to remember which one is which. Alright, so this one goes into the body here. Maybe. And to keep track of it, this jet will go into your Thunder Jet. Spray this out with carburetor cleaner. There we are. Then you can thread your Thunder Jet back onto the thread out here. Oop. Before we do that, let's give that a little carb cleaner bath. Yes. One more for good measure. Yeah. Alrighty. Next, the reinstaller choke plunger, which is all nice and clean now. If you remember, that thing was all crudded up, so we'll hose that out. So if you remember up in here, there was a whole bunch of crap in there, and it's still kind of in there. Ew. That's what you don't want. Next, reinstall this weird screw that they put in the side here. Not sure why they drilled a hole in there. But whatever. Sealed back up now. Okay, sorry. So, back to the choke plunger. So, choke plunger. That thing's nice and clean. Drop it down in there. You have the brass bushing that holds your choke plunger in. But that's what they want. So we'll thread that down on in there. First, snug it up with your fingers. Make sure it moves up and down. Then you can remember that you forgot to put the spring back in there. Take it back out. Locate the spring. Now that you've located your choke spring, slide that back down in there. Then slide this cap down on top of it. Check it for operation. And tighten her up. Next. Next, take your new mix screw. We're just going to reuse the old spring. Thread that down in there. 
Now standard SNS tuning is to back this out one and a quarter. So what that means is you thread this down in here until it stops. Don't over tighten it, just thread it up till it stops. Then back it out one and a quarter turns. There's one half, there's one full turn, there's one and a quarter. Once I get the tuning set, I always put a little dimple on the at 12 o'clock on this with a magic marker. That way I know if somehow or another it moved due to vibration or when I was washing the bike or something. Always good to have that reference point. Next, that is pretty much it for the that part of the, oh, not yet. Reinstall the main jet. Hold up the light, make sure she's good. Clean it out with carb cleaner. Tighten her up. Okay, so the body is basically reassembled minus the uh, minus the throttle plate. So we're actually going to set that off to the side. I'm going to put the throttle plate on last. I'll explain later. Now let's move the float ball and the accelerator pump. So this has got some crud in it down here, so we're going to clean that sucker out real good. All right, so get this nice and cleaned out there. Make sure your gasket surface is nice and clean. All right, now we're going to rebuild this or reassemble this. Remember from all the little pieces, parts, and the teeny tiny little ball bearings, everything goes in there? So first things first, we're gonna use our old mix screw. And we're gonna take that and we're gonna drop our screw down or spring down in there. Then from there, we're gonna take one ball bearing. Luckily, my screwdriver is still a little magnetic. Set it into that one. Take the other ball bearing. Set it in there on top of the spring. Boop. Take the two replacement O-rings that perfectly fit in there. Set one on there. And set one on there. If you're in doubt as to which O-ring goes where, it should just fit in there nice and evenly. If you have to squeeze it way down or stretch it way out, it's the wrong O-ring. Then from there, we will take our new, there's our old accelerator pump diaphragm. Here's our new one. And if you look, there's a little groove here inside the cap. Let's give this a bath real quick. So we can take the groove that's on the accelerator pump diaphragm, put it down in there. Take the spring, essentially it's gonna sit on top of there, but it will sit on top of there. Oh, I'm sorry, I had a brain fart. Spring goes in first, has to spring back up. Duh. Now take the diaphragm, put it down on there. Hopefully it goes on relatively easy and won't want to spring up out of there like this one does. Well, it is what it is. So now we're gonna turn this over, try to hold this down, turn it over, slide into place. Slide your finger out of there all at once. Okay, so I'm squeezing this whole sucker together. And what I'm doing is I'm looking in here, looking for a nice even gap. I'm moving it around a little bit making sure we didn't pinch anything in there. Then while holding it down, going to get our new screws and put a new screw in here. And take your time with this. You don't want to pinch that diaphragm down in there. Just get that lightly started in there. Take a new screw. Oh, that's the that's the wrong one. Is that the right screw? Okay. 
cut. We're going to edit out that little fuck up right there. Thread that down in like so. Now you can take your screwdriver, tighten up each one of these. Why are those screws so goddamn short? I don't like that. All right, come back in. All right, that's all good to go. Now, take our drain plug, give that little squirt out there inside. Take our new O-ring. Find a razor knife. Whoop, pop the old O-ring off of there. If we cut it, whatever. There we go. Take that. Dispose of it. Take your new O-ring. Roll it on up there. Thread that into the bottom of the float bowl. Find your 5 8 wrench and tighten her up. Next. We have our new brass fuel intake, whatever we want to call it. Most importantly, the one with the nice, clean, shiny surface down there. And we're going to thread that. It's got a new O-ring on it already. It was in the kit. And we're going to thread that right up in the float bowl. Take our 5 8 wrench, snug that up really well. Boom. Our float bowl is ready to reinstall. Now, if you're wondering, this little port right here, this is the output port for your Thunderjet. If you don't have a Thunderjet installed, you're not going to have this right here. This is the overflow drain. So check everything out there. Everything looks all well and good. Now, reinstall the float. Now, determine where the float went. There it is. It hid from me. So you can take your new float plunger. Slide it on here. Oh wait, don't drop it down in there yet. Then take the new rod that goes through this here, through your float, that little rod that it pivots on, drop it down in there. Then take your big, Absurdly large little flathead one there. Move your stuff out of the way. Thread that sucker whoop, right down in there. That'll hold that rod in place. Yeah, tighten her up. Now, to set the float height, you're going to push the push down on the float. And what you want to do, you're going to push down actually down on the plunger right here. And what you're going to want to do is you're measuring from this gasket surface here to the top of the float here. I actually don't remember what it is, so I got to look it up really quick. All right. So we have the depth end of our calipers set to 3 16 because SNS says 1 8 to 3 16 So we're going to push this down in there. Now I could give you some advice. Check this for slop. Um, I had one carburetor. This had a bunch of slop on it, so pushing it down wasn't actually right. You actually had to lift up on the float just a wee little bit to make sure it was at the right height. This one's good. So, from the gasket surface down to the top of the float. I don't know if you can see there or not, but we're like a quarter inch low. So to lift that up, you just bend this metal tab here. I think I just bent it too much. Oh, yeah, see how high that is? I bent that way too much. Still a little too high. Oh, that's just about right. Right there. I don't know if you can see there or not. But I can. 
So, we are good to go with that. Now, we're going to put our float bowl gasket on there. There's two things you want to do. First, place your float bowl gasket over top of everything and put it up into place. Most importantly, make sure it doesn't block any holes here in your, your float bowl. Uh, you don't want it to block any screw holes, passages, anything like that. Make sure it sits down there nice and tight. It's very important. It's possible maybe one of these didn't get knocked out or something in the manufacturing process and it would cause you a whole lot of grief. Now, here's a part everybody overlooks. There's one little wee tiny little O-ring. It goes on top of your accelerator pump squirter. It should fit on there tight, so when you turn it upside down, it doesn't fall off. And that will go right up in there. So slide all of this in place. Once that's all in place, you can take your new screws that came with your cycle source rebuild kit and start all of those down in there. Tighten that one up. Tighten that one up. All right. Check that one because I can't remember if I tightened it. It's tight. All right. Float bowl is reassembled and everything except the throttle plate is now reassembled. Actually, before we do that, we're going to take this little rubber boot here that goes over the accelerator pump rod. And we're going to put the accelerator pump rod down through there. Should be spring loaded. Try it out. Cool. All right. Fucking A. There's a bevel on this shaft, on this plate. I don't know if you can see or not, but it actually uh, angles this way. This is the same on the other end. You want to make sure when you put this plate back in there, when you put this throttle plate back in there, that bevel is what's hitting the bore on this. If you don't, if you put that in backwards, this thing won't close all the way. So remember the bevel needs to come down and it needs to actually hit the bore of the carburetor. When this is closed without any of your stop screws in it, if you hold this up to the light, you shouldn't be able to see any light through the top or the bottom of that. It should seal up. Well, there's trace amounts of light, but you know what I mean. It should seal up really, really tight. If it doesn't appear to close or there's like a big air gap there, you've put it in wrong. All right, so we're gonna take our throttle spring. We're gonna hook it up to where this little U-notch is here. And we're going to take the throttle shaft and the shorter end here, you know, from the groove to the end, that goes through your uh, where your cables attach. I don't know what we're calling that today. Lock washer. Wee little dab of thread, medium strength thread locker. Whoops. Whatevs. Put that on there. Tighten her up. You actually don't need the spring in place. I just kind of thinking out loud as I did it. Snug it, sucker up. If you can't get super tight right now, don't worry about it. Here's the here's the difficult part, getting this spring on here. So hook it onto hook it onto this cable attachment plate right where that little notch is. Make sure it's dropped down into this little groove here. And we're going to slide it all the way through. As we slide it through, this little tab here needs to catch on the top of this boss right there. So you're going to have to put it in and you're going to have to wind her up. All while making sure the spring, there, so the spring is down on there. Hopefully you can see it. Pointer. Other part of the spring is on there. So we're gonna put it in there. Here's the tricky part. You gotta get this metal tab past that boss. This big honking metal tab right there. So we're gonna pull it out a little bit. We're gonna pop it down in there. Then we're gonna inspect the spring, make sure it didn't pop out of place. 
We're even gonna push in and cycle it a few times. It feels good. So, stop right there. Take a breath. Get your new throttle plate. Slide it down in there, and it's only gonna fit in perfect alignment. Slide down there, line the holes up, let her close, but you're gonna have to wiggle that plate around to get that perfect alignment to get that to close up right there. Take another breath, this is fresh rain. Now, a little medium strength thread locker. Boop. Put it onto the tip of your Phillips screwdriver. The manual does not tell you to use thread lock around these screws, but I, I just see two tiny little screws and imagine them vibrating out and zipping down my intake, and nobody wants that. So, I'm gonna put a little medium strength thread locker on there, on each one of those. And we're gonna run them down there. Use your best fitting Phillips screwdriver bit for that. Snug each one of them up. Don't even tighten them up yet. Just snug them up a little bit, like just beyond finger tight. Cycle this sucker. Make sure it works. I actually spent like 30 minutes just fighting with this thing. Here's the best way I figured out to explain how to do this. This is not an easy task. You have your accelerator pump assembly here. This little wet tab here is what pushes down the rod. Take your spring, hook it into the notch. Take this part of the spring, wrap it around, hook it onto this flat here. Careful, it's going to want to shoot off of there and stab your thumb. All right, you got that far. Screenshot that. Now, take this other piece of linkage. I don't know what this thing is called, the travel movement, whatchamacallit. Hook it on the notch there. Make sure the other tab is on the outside of the spring. Oh, this is not easy to demonstrate. Okay. See how you got both those little flats right there? That's your goal. Take this sucker. Slide down on there. Twist this into place. Push your spring back inside those little tabs and push it down on there like that. Is that easy? No. It's a royal pain. Take the nut here, thread it on there. Don't even worry about thread lock or anything yet. Just trust me on this. Slide that down on there. Look at it, you see the spring's crooked. It's all gotta go on a little bit further. Take a flathead screwdriver, push the spring down. Push this flat tab in front there, and push it the rest of the way down on there. Thread the nut on a little bit further. Okay, everything's kind of in place now. You see that? Show it to you at that angle. And that angle, and that angle, and that angle. It's what it's supposed to look like. Test it out. Make sure that as soon as you move that, is the absolute nanosecond you're moving that throttle, it's pushing down that accelerator pump. If you don't have that, this thing ain't going to work right. Now that you're sure it all works, you have full travel, thread this nut back off of there carefully. Drop your new lock washer on there. Put a dab of medium strength thread locker on there. Thread that nut back on there. Tighten this up. I don't know what the torque spec is. Just tighten it up. Tighten this one up. While you're at it, check to make sure these two are still tight. 
They're sitting in good shape there. Cycle it a couple more times. Ensure all the linkages work. Sure everything moves as it should. Everything has the nice long travel there that it should. Everything returns back home. Everything's sitting in really good shape. So I don't really like how small that screwdriver slot is on the new one, and the old one's in really good shape. So we're gonna use the new spring and the old screw. I know that's kind of petty and it would probably be fine, but I just don't like it. So, so we're gonna throw, thread this down in there. The spring will eventually tighten up. And as soon as it starts to make contact, we are going to go, actually we're gonna stop. No, I think it's like one full turn. I don't remember what it is. Check the SNS book. We'll go with half, one full turn, because that's what I think it is. I don't completely remember. Now we're going to take the shorter screw. It has a better slot, a screwdriver slot in it. We're going to take our new spring. Oops, sorry. Other new spring. Not that new spring. This new spring. And we're going to thread that into our accelerator pump. This is actually our accelerator pump stop screw. The further you crank this in, the less accelerator pump you have. Thread this all the way in there. And since we're going to start out with this bottomed out, this is exactly what we're going to do with the screw. Because you can't tune it in there. Boop. You can't tune it in there with that, um, with the accelerator pump in action. So, right there, keeps the accelerator pump from going anywhere. That's good to go. Take our brand new O-ring. Drop it down into that little groove there. If it doesn't stick in there, you can use gasket tack. I like to use just a little bit of grease. That way you don't have to scrape the gasket tack off down the road. Uh, and any extra grease will just smoosh out and, uh, you know, if it gets sucked in the intake, it'll just burn off. It's not really a big deal. Whoop. All right. And, uh, oh, wait. One more thing. The cap for our Thunderjet. Where'd that stupid thing go? Make sure you put the cap on your thread locker. Seriously, where the fuck is that thing going? Where the fuck is the cap for the Thunder Jet? I legit don't know where the fucking thing went. I'm losing my patience. Next, you can take the mount that holds your throttle cables on, take your big flathead screw there, thread that sucker right down in there. Tighten her up. Tighten her up there real good and tight. All right. 